I told my mom I was coming to, uh, to Montgomery, yeah. Alabama, and I was going to go to what I told her was a lynching museum. And she said, why would they want to do that? <laughs> yeah. I think that we have developed uh, a, a really uh, advanced coping strategy of silence. This is the National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama, a site dedicated to the more than 4,000 victims of lynching in America. You know, we started the research years ago, and then the monuments started to come. And when they arrived, I think the thing that completely blew me away that I hadn't just thought about before was sort of seeing these names. He is Brian Stevenson, a lawyer who founded the Equal Justice Initiative, or EJI, an organization with a long and powerful record of getting more than 100 people off of death row, of fighting for juveniles with life sentences, and of winning cases that went as high as the Supreme Court. Even in the names, you see stories like this is an entire family that's killed in, in Tattnall County, Georgia. And those stories are everywhere. Elizabeth Lawrence lynched in Birmingham, 1933. School teacher coming home, she was walking and a bunch of white kids started throwing stones at her. Mm -hmm. And like any good teacher, she said to these kids, don't throw stones at people. They went home and told their parents that they had been chastised by a black woman, that parents were outraged, they organized a mob, they went to her home and they lynched her. The memorial and a nearby museum that connects slavery, lynching, Jim Crow, and mass incarceration open on April 26th. And some people might find it difficult to make the connection between slavery and mass incarceration it might be a difficult leap for mm -hmm. some people. Well, and I don't think people should leap. I think it's a continuum, right? This picture gives insight on why we're talking about this. Southern prisons made incarcerated people pick cotton until the 80s and early 1990s. And that's where that language in the state in the 13th Amendment that prohibits slavery except for people convicted of crimes becomes so relevant. This isn't an accident. Right. It's funny, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm starting to sound like the people who raised me. But I, I'm too old for it. I've seen too much. I don't want to go through another 30 years of seeing people wrongly convicted and brutalized and condemned and mistreated uh, and not do something disruptive, do something different. What is your hope uh, that people will take away from this museum once they spend time here going through the exhibits? I think we need to create spaces in this country where we tell the story of what happened to Native people, where we tell the story of what happened to African Americans, where we tell the story of slavery, the story of lynching, the story of segregation. And at the end of it, people are motivated to say, never again. Because I don't think we've ever been required to say that. So my hope is that people will leave this space uh, prepared to say, never again can we tolerate racial bias and bigotry anywhere. And I think if we create a consciousness like that, uh, we can begin to expect more from our institutions, from our schools, from our system, our court system, from our elected leaders than we expect right now. We don't expect as much as we should.